What I want to now do is just open it up. Does anybody in our little circle here have a question to Sissy? A curiosity about this whole process. Hi, Hi. Deb. Hi. So I've had experience with, um, I did some ketamine treatments uh, about two years ago. And I know it's entirely different from being a plant medicine, but there's still, I still experienced a lot of what you're talking about. And I didn't anticipate that. Um, so um, it, it was life-changing. I just was doing it for PTSD and depression. But when I, I left that experience, I realized all of a sudden I'm not eating meat anymore. I'm changing what I eat. I stopped taking medications. I got off of all of them. I wanted clean water. I wanted to change my diet, just all this stuff. I value different things. The ego, gone. <laughs> and then it just like been this whole work that I've been doing to be more present and conscious and the spirituality part. It's become such a drive. I'm trying to like work on I, I almost feel like I want to go and do another experience similar to that. Um, I don't know. I was looking at, at the idea of possibly a boga or something like that. I'm looking for something a little less intense, ayahuasca, <laughs> because with the ketamine, it's out of you. Once the infusion stops, you're just pretty much not ex having the experience anymore, and it wasn't uncomfortable. So I just have concerns about having you know a really negative experience so i don't know if you have any knowledge about iboga and then also any advice on integrating in society that's something they didn't do with me and they realize there's a need for it later but the integration piece is really important too because you come back with a lot of information i had journals i came back writing and so i guess it's two questions or three if you have knowledge about iboga <laughs> Um, also working with, if you, if I, if I did do the ayahuasca experience, like working through a bad experience and how, how to do that, I guess, and then integration process and any information you have about that. Yeah. So I do not know the medicine that you were talking about. I just very recently had my first, um, LSD experience, it was beautiful. So what I understand is it um, doesn't matter, plant So Alaska, it has DMT in it. It's the chemical that trigger our brain uh, to have those experience. So it doesn't necessarily have to be plant medicine, it can be um, protected, well-guided medicine too. What I do know, there are other kind of plant medicine that's um, milder than Alaska. I'm trying to find a link. Um, I know there's a resort in Costa Rica that does a plant medicine from frog. I think it's called Bufo, uh, Buf, Bufo, B U F O. But I, I'm, I'm trying to look for that, and I will type in the chat later once I figure out that um, information and the integration. Uh, it really does seem like it's a matter of researching enough to be safe, and. Uh, what I've been researching is that people do jump in and get hurt by teachers without integrity, you know, and um, in the, in the jungles, there are people, their culture is different. It's, um, it can be a bit gangster about the ayahuasca approach to, to consciousness. Um, and the other thing, even in the more integrated or the uh, more integrous style of ayahuasca growth, the purging is an important part of the process. You're getting rid of toxins, you're getting rid so, and I think that it's helpful to know this right away because what we have is thrill seeking. So people want the high, they want the fantas fantasy or the fantastical to happen. But the reality is you're being transformed and it's not comfortable. So, <laughs> The, the good and bad experiences are good and bad based on our perceptions. And when we go in and we're, we go to the other side, we realize we've been judging bad, what we call bad experiences are actually transformative uh, energies. And I think this is all stuff that's true for 
transformation in general, we, you know, in energy consciousness work, uh, we learn to trust all the challenges, the tensions in our life as teachers. So in general, that's to me how I've integrated higher awareness or higher experiences is that when I'm going through my daily life, I'm no longer arguing with life. I'm trusting what's going on in the middle of it. It's asking me to be more all the time. It's asking me to look at myself in terms of my marriage in really intense ways or in how I live everyday life. So in terms of integrating, I think that what we, you can, we can all notice in everyday life is we have an ego that says, no, this, this challenging experience is bad. How do I get rid of it? And what Sissy is speaking to is you can't do that in the ayahuasca experience and let that teach you about how to live daily life too. That there's these experiences right in the middle of your, yourself right now there's these challenges inside between your ears. And what if we gave up the fight? What if we let our own energies right now teach us? What if we could just be with ourselves intimately? The ayahuasca is a way to teach us that. There's other softer methods. By the way, I am not an ayahuasca person and I don't perceive I'm gonna do ayahuasca. Um, I'm an enthusiast by when people find their answer. And I want to support Sissy and anybody that wants to do uh, this path. Um, so that was two questions, the purging, and we're trying to find some answers for Deb on other styles of, of, of hallucinogens. I also want to share that um, if, a, if, if you're looking at using mind-altering drugs from a thrill-seeking attitude or trying to, um, what is it, make yourself happy with substances, you've missed the point of this whole dialogue. What was the third question yeah. you had, Deb? Oh, not for I, me, it's definitely not for thrill seeking. I, I, I go in with questions and like, for me, um, I, I feel like deeper answers come from places that like that, maybe the higher self um and um it's definitely not just a that's not what i'm anticipating for me um originally i was trying to work with um ptsd and stuff and it did help for that. Sure that by the way i didn't mean to point you out i meant i was we're talking oh, to, uh, yeah. to um facebook and youtube right now i want to make sure everybody knows oh, sure the general framework we're in, but Deb, I, I really did not get that you're thrill seeking. You're trying to get high off of stuff. <laughs> but yeah. um, I, I felt like it was so amazing how it just changed everything in my life. And that's the integrating part of like, you, if you do that experience, I've watched reconnect with um, Dennis McKenna and I've listened to a lot of Terrence McKenna. Um, but it's just like a deeper realm where you get receive more answers about life and yourself and reality as you know it is entirely different so that's the part that maybe someone wouldn't anticipate is that it changes your perception so deeply about what is reality it's it's based on your own perceptions and our own perceptions are very conditioned i think and it helps you question your conditioning and then open up the ability to make maybe make some changes in your life because you become more aware of what's there blocking you. So, Yeah, well said that um, ayahuasca you. is not a recreational drug and you need to be properly guided by a shaman with um, experience. Uh, we need intention before we drink the plant medicine with respect. Otherwise, the trip, if it's non-controlled, I don't know what could happen and it do take bravery like i understand when deb said uh, ayahuasca is intense because i don't think everyone's ready for that um when i first got to the retreat a lot of people were telling me how brave i i was i was like why is it brave and then for a ceremony later i was like mm, this me we really need bravery to meet our soul to see who we have become um so totally on that and then integration i after I came back from my ayahuasca experience, I did a month long diet. I did not drink alcohol. 
no red meat. I continue to have salad with fish and chicken. I exercise every day. I did yoga. I meditate. I did breast work if I had time. I cut down my media consumption. Like did not watch Netflix uh, uh, because I think even news or TV show have different vibrations. I'd rather stay in that vibration as high as possible. I went to Jeremy's uh, Reiki sharing because I know that's a good place for healing. And I did experience a surge of my um, ability to detect other people's energy. And then I, I found a local drum circle because they play the same, similar music with the Awasa retreat, which is uh, led by the indigenous people. Um, I fortunately I didn't have a full-time job, so I didn't go back to work right away. But I from people who were in the same retreat with me, I did hear like other people struggle of that integration. That's when a solid foundation of who we are come into play. That's important. Um, I think if I were in that situation, I would come home at the end of the day and meditate and find my balance and ground myself. A very important lesson I learned and I continue to do these days is um, grounding, earthing. What that mean to me is the easiest way is take off my shoes and walk on the grass in a local park or sit, sit on the grass. When I meditate these days, I, I sit on the grass in the park. I don't just do it at home. Uh, connect with the earth. Um, I think that's a really effective way and a way that a lot of people have overlooked because we have fancy shoes, we, we, we car everywhere, but just be with the nature is so, so helpful. Uh, what I want to offer to see is the full integration to me is you, you remember and utilize your tools consistently. So I'm um, coming back from a retreat or, or a big experience. And then if it equals a new way of living where like, like it can be, you do 30 mini meditations, one minute meditations a day or something so that you're always managing yourself to be free while functioning. So that to me is another level of integration where somehow you connect it to your spirit and an attitude about living you're to make sure that you're going to be free while interacting with egos in the material world or whatever. So that would be like the full integration to me. But Sissy's talking about uh, the tools that she's willing to do in rare fashion. She's doing the breath work and uh, the meditation and all the different things. But if, um, if uh, one needs to do more in life, well, Sissy's right now in a kind of a timeout in her life. <laughs> things have slowed down beautifully. But just, uh, just to hold the vision up um, for me, uh, I hold in mind that I can be uh, with, with the world as my true self. And that's, that's my, what I'm doing in best efforts, that I can be right here as freedom interacting with the world. No longer am I a physical being looking for spiritual experiences. I'm now the infinite being or a spiritual being in a physical experience. And that's the fact of my moment while I'm driving or cooking or um, interacting doing whatever, politics or finances, whatever. 